studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Sigmund Romberg operetta, The Desert Song, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Mimi Benzel. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Tonight, we bring you one of the great romantic operators of all time, The Desert Song. As Margot Bonvalle, you will hear lovely Mimi Benzel. And I shall don the mask and flowing red cape of that mysterious romantic figure, The Red Shadow. Red Shadow. I had come to Morocco as the guest of Governor Birabo and his family. One day I was standing alone outside the fortress, when suddenly a band of rips came galloping over the hill. Their leader wore a long red cloak and a mask, and no one who saw him ride by, singing as he rode, could ever forget him. I've been looking everywhere for you. You must never come outside the fortress alone. No, it, it isn't safe. Oh, I'm sorry. I worried you. Well, where were you this afternoon, Pierre? Oh, I was out hunting for wildflowers. Ah, wildflowers. What sort of a son am I raising? Come on, go. Let's go back inside the gate. Very well. Oh, Governor, I think Morocco is so exciting and full of adventure. It must be the most romantic place in the world. Margot, I'm afraid your head's entirely too full of romance. 
You're right. It is. to be somewhere within the ground. The Red Shadow. Oh, how romantic he sounds. I think I should welcome him. Oh, no, my child. Now go to your room. Oh, very well. Good evening, mademoiselle. <gasps> you're... You're the Red Shadow. Your servant. I heard you say you would welcome me. You heard me? Where were you? In the shadows. Come with me, tonight, into the desert. Come with me and you'll never want to return. You're very sure of yourself. Not of myself. But who can resist the magic of the desert? My desert is waiting. Dear, come there with me.
waiting just outside the gates as you ordered. Will you come with me, Margot? You know my name. I know your name, your dreams, and even perhaps your future. Come with me. Oh, it's impossible. If you won't come of your own free will, then I shall have to pick you up and carry you off. Let me alone. Stop. All right. I've got it. Come on, Hassie. Yes, Master here. Through this window. Shh, quiet now. Quiet. We don't want anyone to hear us. Second act of The Desert Song, starring Gordon McRae as the Red Shadow, and his guest Mimi Benzel as Margot, with Francis X. Bushman as Governor Birabo. All night we rode across the desert. Just at dawn, we arrived in front of a great castle. The red shadow bowed to the man who came across to welcome us. Once more, exalted Ali, I beg your kindness and shelter. Should I not protect the protector of my tribe? What did you do this time, hmm? Burn down a prison? Kidnap a tax collector? Blow up a dam so the farmers could have water? No, it's a little different this time, Ali. I have captured a French woman. A French woman? So you brought her forcibly against her will? Yes. From the quarters of Governor Birabo, where I am a guest. Well, you have put us all in danger by bringing this woman here, my friend. I beg you, send her back. I've risked my life for you many times. And this is the first time I've asked anything in return, Ali. I will not send this woman back. I'm going to win her for my own. Then they led me to an outer room 
where the red shadow was waiting. Margot. Why did you bring me here? To teach you to love me. You're a bandit, an outlaw, an enemy of my people. Margot, when I came to Morocco eight years ago, the French governor was abusing the Arabs. I could not reason with him. So I put on this red mask and cloak and rode into the hills to the palace of Ali Ben Ali. I said to him, give me 20 men who aren't afraid to risk their lives. And when the law is wrong, we will overturn the law. Are you speaking of Governor Birabo? No, the former governor, General Fontaine. But Governor Birabo came here for one purpose, to destroy the Red Shadow. I am willing to risk my life to win your love. That is impossible, monsieur. I, I am already in love with the governor's son. Yeah. That weakling, that picker of flowers? <laughs> All right. I'll send Pierre to you. Have you captured him, too? He's here. <gasps> and if Pierre can win you, why, then I swear by all I hold sacred to send you back his bride. No. No. Wait. Let me think. Margot, you, you do love me. You must. Desert breeze, no end, bring a lullaby. Only stars above you to see I love you. Thank heaven I've found you. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I am, Governor. Sir, Miss the Red Shadow. In my younger days, I was a good swordsman. The men have told me that if I can defeat you in single combat, then you will release Margot Bonvalet. Well, sir, I'm going to kill you, or you will have to kill me. Oh, Governor Birabo, please don't do this. Step aside, Margot. Draw your sword, sir. The Red Shadow. Aren't you going to fight? You must fight. I surrender my sword. Well, it seems I've won an easy victory, but I can't call it a very proud one. As Governor Birabo and I rode towards home, we saw the Red Shadow standing with his men at the edge of the desert. And as we halted our horses, we could hear their voices. We have no choice but to follow the law of our tribe, my master. You have refused to fight, so you must be sent into the desert alone, without food, without arms. Your only weapon, this broken sword. It is the will of Allah. We turn our backs now to Mecca and pray as you start into the desert. May Allah go with me. No. 
The next day, Governor Virabeau and I were back at the fortress, worrying about the governor's son, Pierre, who had disappeared at the same time I had been captured. Suddenly, Olive and Ali arrived with strange and wonderful news. General Virabeau, Mademoiselle Margot, yesterday the man we thought a coward was a man of such dauntless bravery that he had the courage to play the coward. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't understand you. General Biribu, where is your son, Pierre? That's what I was going to ask you. Margot tells me that yesterday was in your palace. Or so the Red Shadow told her that... Precisely. But no one saw Pierre arrive, and no one saw him go. What do you mean? One of my women, Azuri, saw the Red Shadow without his mask yesterday. She recognized him, solved the riddle for me, and I am endeavoring to solve it for you. Will a son kill his father? Will a son? No. No. Pierre is the Red Shadow. Exactly, mademoiselle. Pierre, the Red Shadow. My son. Oh, my son. The Red Shadow is dead. They killed him. They killed my son. The Red Shadow is dead. For the Red Shadow. Oh. Who is responsible? Which of my soldiers? I killed him. Father? Pierre! I'm the man who put an end to the Red Shadow. <laughs> you see, Father, you never thought I was brave. My son, you were bravest at that moment when you refused to fight. Father, how, how did you find out? Does it matter now? Then you've done your work. Back to the square. And double rations of food and wine for all of you. Dismiss. <laughs> Here, as governor of this post, all I know and all I want to know is that the red shadow is no more. Then you forgive me. You have done nothing wrong, my boy. And you seem to understand these people better than I do. Perhaps if we can work together, there'll be no further need of a rip. Robin Hood. Thank you, my father. Thank you. Margo, I, I don't know how you feel about me now, but I've been in love with you since the first hour I saw you. Oh, darling. Now I know why I couldn't decide between Pierre and the Red Shadow. But I needed and loved both of in just a moment. And meanwhile, a word of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Francis X. Bushman, Paul Fries, and our entire company. Desert Song with music by Sigmund Romberg and book and lyrics by Otto Harbach, Oscar Hammerstein II, and Frank Mandel was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. And now, here again is lovely Nene Benzel. Thank you, Gordon. You'd better watch out playing those double roles. Betty Davis and Olivia de Havilland will get jealous. Why, Mimi, they let me do everything on the show train, you know. I throttle the engine, sweep out the caboose. <laughs> well, what's on your show train next week, Gordon? Well, I got to buckle my sword right back on, Mimi. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a wonderful show by Rudolph Thermo called The Three Musketeers. Oh. And Dorothy Warren's show will join us as we swashbuckle all over the place. <laughs> well, I'll be listening, D'Artagnan. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Mimi. You were wonderful. Oh. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> song was presented by arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC.
Hear the voice of Firestone with Dorothy Warrenchold on NBC.